Hi, I'm Hannah. And I'm Shay. And we're Dinner National. Today, we're making food from El Salvador. El Salvador is the smallest country in Central America, but within it lies larger than life spectacles such as Cerro Verde National Park and Tasumo, the Step Pyramid, which dates back to 400 AD. Though this nation boasts a complex history, the people of El Salvador are resilient and have been able to build and maintain a distinct cultural identity throughout any hardships they have endured. Part of this identity is its cuisine. Heavily corn-based and extremely comforting, Salvadoran food is derived from both Spanish and Mesoamerican backgrounds. Though we have not heard much about the cuisine from El Salvador, we can say from first-hand experience that this is definitely worth trying. One of their most famous dishes, and our appetizer today, is the pupusa, a masa dough stuffed with a variety of fillings and rolled out to the likeness of a thick tortilla. We serve this with the classic accompaniment of curtido, or pickled cabbage, carrots, and peppers. This slaw added brightness to our pupusa, as well as a kick coming from the jalapeno. Our main course was lomo relleno, a special occasion pork loin which we lined with ham, prunes, mushrooms, and spices, rolled up tightly and baked to buttery perfection. Lomo relleno is as pretty as it is delicious and is a must try for any pork lovers out there. Let's get started. I already started the curtido without you. Curtido is kind of like a sauerkraut or a slaw of sorts. It adds a little brightness to a taco or a pupusa. When you weren't looking, I shredded a quarter head of cabbage. I shredded one carrot and thinly sliced a red onion and one jalapeno. So we blanched the cabbage by pouring boiling hot water on it, followed by cool water to stop the cooking. And we squeezed the water out. We have our cabbage here, it's been softened. I'm gonna use my hands, they're clean. I'm just gonna put this cabbage in the jar without spilling any of it. I've already spilled it. I don't know why this is so hard for me sometimes. Kind of press this down, make sure there's room for the other ingredients. Here we have my shredded carrot. You can use a cheese grater for this. Does anyone ever do this and not spill though? I mean, sliced red onion and our thinly sliced jalapeno. I'm leaving the seeds in, you can take them out if you want, but we need a little bit of spice. Okay, I've got one teaspoon of dried oregano, one teaspoon of kosher salt, all right, and half a cup of white vinegar. So you'll notice this doesn't actually cover all the cabbage and carrots. Um, that's okay. What we're gonna do is put the lid on and we're gonna shake this. Pretend you're like the best bartender in the world. It's good. Nice. So you can keep this in your fridge for a couple weeks. It's best if you leave it for at least a day or two before you eat it, but we're gonna eat it fresh because we're poor planners. And yeah, serve this on the side of pretty much anything that needs a little brightness. Are you guys ready? I'm ready. I'm gonna make some Salvadoran Lomo Relleno. This festive dish is popular all around South and Central America. And we're just going to give a Salvadoran spin to this. So what I have over here is a one kg smallish round. This is pork loin. And I just kind of butterflied it and kind of like rolled it out. Uh, you remember how we did it for our Chashu episode, right? I mean, we kind of follow the same uh, process over here. And I did not do a very good job, but uh, yeah, practice makes perfect, I guess. So all I'm gonna do now is season this with salt and some freshly ground black pepper. So this is just like a nice couple of pinches of salt, some freshly ground black pepper, FGBP, trademark. And I'm just going to quickly rub this on the inside of the meat and let it rest for a second. Okay, so I'm going to let my meat rest and prepare the stuffing. Okay, so this is more of a technique video. So that means uh, you can change this stuffing according to your tastes and preferences. I found this really interesting recipe and I think this would work great with our pork. So before we do anything, uh, make sure you turn your oven to 400. My oven's already preheated. Um, and I'm just gonna saute up some onions and mushrooms. So step number one, begin with some butter. 
it's like two tablespoons of butter just melt it and this is just about a quarter of a yellow onion we don't need too much we just need a little bit it's important to keep the stuffing layer relatively thin so that you can tie it evenly so resist the temptation to add too much i'm just gonna saute my onions a little bit okay and these are four cremini mushrooms use any kind of mushroom you have i'm gonna give everything a nice stir hannah said i say that a lot give everything a nice stir a little pinch of salt and also the rest of the freshly ground black pepper this is about like a half teaspoon onions go great with pork i also really like the flavor of apples with pork but here today we are going to use some prunes always like trying something new this would be a good time to spice your uh, stuffing whichever way you like today we are going to use some fresh oregano because we have it if you don't have any just use some dried oregano here but make sure you use half my stuffing is kind of done and now i'm going to let this cool butcher twine i finally got some of this <laughs> we're just going to use that to roll it up now it's time to stuff our loin so we have some ham over here this is just black forest i don't know how traditional this kind of ham is but you know that's what we had so we've got some double pork on pork action over here I'm just gonna layer these slices of ham on the meat. And now I'm going to spoon some of this mixture on top of this. I'll just use my hands. Make sure that you're spreading it evenly and resist the temptation to overstuff this. I know it seems really tasty. We all like mushrooms and onions, but we don't want too much stuffing in there, do we? Then it's gonna be really tight for us to roll this and then this whole thing is gonna fall apart and nobody wants that. So let's exercise some caution, some restraint. Okay, time for next ingredient. These are prunes that we diced up. Prunes are just dried plums. So we'll just dot this beautiful loin with some prunes. And now it's time for my favorite, cheese. This is not a traditional Central American cheese. This is good old mozzarella, but uh, we're just gonna use some mozzarella over here. So the cheese is a good flavoring agent and it's also really good for binding because guess what? It melts and it binds the ingredients from within. I have never eaten anything like this. There you go. My meat has been cheesed. All right, wish me luck. Now I'm going to try and roll this boy up and slowly but surely start rolling. Don't be scared because a pork loin can sense fear. There you go. This looks pretty good. Nice. I'm quite happy with this. So remember the butcher twine and now it's time to tie this boy up. I am going to do this extremely gingerly. Tie it up in the center first. We want this to be like really secure because if you tie this really loose, everything's gonna fall apart. Okay, look at this. I tied this into a nice little surprise package. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit tuck all the stuffing a little bit on the inside but you know come to think of it even if there's like a little bit of cheese spilling out it's only gonna be really tasty who doesn't like a little bit of burnt cheese on the edge now i'm gonna quickly go wash my hands and then uh, coat the outside with some salt and pepper all right so now my pork roast has been thoroughly seasoned and it's a nice little bundle of joy and now I'm going to put this in the roasting pan on a rack, fat side up and roast it at 400 for like about an hour, hour and a half. But the important thing is to keep checking because you don't know how thick your roast is, right? So I'm going to check back in an hour. Okay, I'm really excited to make pupusas. These can have different fillings. Some people like chicken, beef, uh, refried beans and cheese. That's what we're doing today. But first, let's make the exterior to the pupusa, which is gonna be made with masa harina, four cups. This is one teaspoon of kosher salt. And I'm going to slowly add in the water. This is important. Slowly add it in and mix it with your hand. This is the fun part until you reach a consistency that's similar to Play-Doh. 
Like you can form it a little bit into a ball, you can kind of manipulate it. Mm, once it gets wet, you can kind of smell that corn maize aroma. <laughs> corn maize. This is kind of like your Venezuelan arepa or Colombian arepa. It's gonna be real nice if everything goes according to plan. Okay, I'm gonna get in there with both hands now to make sure that the dry pieces at the bottom are getting incorporated with the rest of this dough. So nice. I think we're almost there. You can kind of tell, like, kind of test it out. So these are two optional steps, but why would we skip on extra flavor, right? I've got about a teaspoon of chicken bouillon powder. It's gonna add something extra special to our pupusa. And this is two tablespoons of softened butter. These are both optional, but I think, I think they'll make a difference in our consistency and flavor of our dough. So if you can see, the dough is starting to hold together uh, nicely. I can kind of manipulate it. And this is how we're going to make our pupusa. As you can see, I've turned the ball into a four inch in diameter little circle here, disc. And you're gonna put only half a tablespoon of the beans in there. You really don't wanna go too heavy because it's gonna be really hard to form the pupusa. And just a sprinkle of the mozzarella cheese. Now this is the hard part. Kind of bring your palm up and form a little ball with the beans and cheese in the inside and close it at the top. Try to make it as smooth as possible so that this all works out when you start to flatten it. <laughs> My first one kind of burst at the seams a little bit. So we've got our ball and now you can start to gently make it a little flatter. This is great. I'm impressed. But like I said, not too hard. Okay, so this is a pretty beautiful disc we have. And just repeat that. So I'm on my last pupusa. I don't know if you can tell or not, but we've got some cheese and beans left. I think I might have understuffed these, but I'm not a pro, so I just wanted to be careful and make sure I didn't overstuff them. I'm not mad. It's gonna be delicious, especially with that curtido. Yeah, we'll just use these beans and cheese. We'll just use this bean, wait. We'll just use these beans and the cheese to make some enchiladas or something tomorrow. Just gotta be creative, gotta be flexible. So the only step left is to fry these up on a nonstick pan, ungreased. You don't need any oil at all. Cook them through, cook them on both sides until uh, you get some browning. Uh, <laughs> yes! Pupusas. Yeah. These turned out way better than I thought they were going to. If you've seen our India video, I made paratha <laughs> once and it didn't turn out a circle at all. <laughs> the worst one. And so these look fantastic. I'll, I'll get this one. Yeah, I mean, I'm super happy with the way these turned out. I mean, yeah. the color, the consistency, and it tastes amazing too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The refried beans and the cheese is a surprisingly good combination. It kind of reminds me like of a, uh, you know, like a freezer burrito almost. Yeah. But then, you know, it's, it's, it's like a really good flavor profile. Yeah. A little bit of the salsa. So this is salsa roja, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so it's salsa just roja. like a simple salsa of like onions, garlic, tomatoes. We don't need to show you. We've showed you many different salsas many times. But mm. uh, yeah, I think that really works really well with the curtido, the mm -hmm. uh, slaw. Wow, it's so good. Mm. I think I think this would be a um, definite win for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need the tanginess of that slot too. This itself is not supposed to be this like flavor bomb, right? But the cheese too, like the mozzarella cheese, even though it's not the right kind of cheese to use, I mean, we just use mozzarella and it tastes amazing to me. Yeah. All right. Mm. Now I'm going to Eat some more cortito mm. because I really like the slaw. It is good. And like I said earlier, you can just keep this in your fridge and use it for whatever. I mean, you don't have to be making food from El Salvador to have some pickled cabbage. Mm -hmm. And the onions and the carrot and the jalapenos, it's definitely got a nice kick to it. Mm -hmm. So you're just supposed to eat these with your hands. Beautiful pupusas. Mm -hmm. Good job, babe. Thank you. I'm like, I'm loving it. 
I'm gonna go in for the meat. I'm really excited about this. We've never cooked with prunes, ever. I know, and whatever little pieces I have been uh, sneaking, they have been super tasty. Mm -hmm. mm, it's just so simple, yet it's so amazing, wow. The salt and the mushrooms and the butter mm -hmm. and the butter basting really give, makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and so you can do different things with the stuffing, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like this is the only kind of uh, filling you can put in this. It's exactly. I saw some uh, with walnuts in mm -hmm. it, almonds, all sorts of delicious combinations. Mm -hmm. But for me, just salt, mm -hmm. butter and oregano. That's such, a, that's such a winning combination right there. Yeah. Tender, juicy, mm -hmm. salty. Salted to perfection. He did a very good job. All right, so you wanna finish eating this? Yeah. <laughs> Do come back next week.